Hi there, welcome to BA Consulting Pro. This is the last episode of our series Getting Started with Microsoft Fabric. In this episode, you are going to learn how to administer Microsoft Fabric. As a Microsoft Fabric admin, you have a lot of responsibilities such as security, licensing, governing the items over there, managing the capacities, etc. So in this video, we are going to go through all of them one by one. So this is not a demo video because over here you won't get a lot of things that I can demo you for you. But I'm going to show you the fabric portal where you can manage some of the items over there. However, please do note that if you are already know the Microsoft Power BI admin part, then you can easily manage the Microsoft fabric as well. So if you are interested in this, please stay tuned with me till the end of this video and I'm going to let you know everything about it. Now, what are you waiting for? Let's get started. All right. Now, as I mentioned that as a fabric administrator, it is a crucial process that you know the different activities that can be performed as a Power BI admin. That can happen that you are allowing access to the different items. It can also happen that you are managing the licenses or you are allowing certain access or managing the items inside any workspaces. So there are lots of other parts over there. However, the main important understanding should be about the architecture of Microsoft Fabric. What are the different components over there? What is the item? What are other concepts in Microsoft Fabric? You should know about that. If you don't know, then you may not be able to perform your role at its best. So now we are going to start from the very first, which is going to be the architecture of Microsoft Fabric. The foundation of Microsoft Fabric is one lake. And what is one lake? One lake is nothing but ADLS Gen 2, that is Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2, where you can store any amount of data. However, there are certain algorithm runs over there that's going to enable you to store your data or your files in the data format. Now, if you would like to know more, then you can watch the other videos which we have already created on Microsoft Fabric. But over here, you can see on your screen that we have different experiences in Microsoft Fabric. All these experiences can be utilized to perform end-to-end -end data analytics solution. Microsoft Fabric is a software as a service where you can perform or cater all your data analytics needs whether it's a data science, data engineering, data analysis or data analyst work, or maybe you want to analyze the real-time analytics over there. So everything you're gonna get it there, including Microsoft Power BI. Now, over here, you can see that there is a one lake where you can store the data in the data warehouses. You can create your own lake house. You can create your own database, etc. over there. Now you can also see that the data has been, uh, the data is, is gonna be stored in the Delta Party format files over there. As you can see that you are going to store the data in the delta format over there. Now you can query all of your lake house or your databases or the data warehouse over here using SQL. You can also use the Spark, KQL, or you can use the analysis services over there. So you are going to get lots of different ways to access your data. You can even utilize your notebooks over there. And the best part is that you don't need to wait to just, you know, uh, comments or just to you know mount any services like you have to do in Microsoft Azure each of the service you have to create their own instances and then you have to start utilizing it over there that's not going to be the challenge it's going to start within seconds over there now on the top of that you can build your different kinds of experiences whether you are going to use a snips data warehousing you are going to use your data factory and in the data factory you can use the copy activity you can just create the pipelines over there etc so there are lots of other items as there there is a snips real analytics time there is a snips real time analytics as well basically if you have a data that is coming from the iot devices or any device that is continuously generating the data and you need to analyze in the real time that you can also do and the best part is that you can use the microsoft power bi over here so you can visualize your data instantly over there now we are going to move forward where we are going to talk about the fabric concepts so there are lots of fabric concepts that you must be aware about the very first fabric concept we are going to talk about the tenant so what is a tenant? Well, guys, a fabric tenant is nothing but a dedicated space for organizations to create, store, and manage fabric items. Generally, every organization have only one tenant, but it is not fixed. If your organization need more than one tenant, they can have it. These tenants are going to be aligned with your Microsoft Intro ID. The fabric tenant maps to the root of one lake and is at the top level of the hierarchy. So based on your intro ID, you can access the fabric tenant. You can also use the single sign-on, but please do check the documentation for further information. Now, now we are going to talk about the capacity. Capacity, what is it? 
Well, if you are coming from the Power BI background and you already worked on the Power BI Premium, then you know the capacity is nothing but the dedicated resources that you get. Over there, you can get the licenses based on F SKUs or P SKUs. Previously, you can also get, get the A SKUs for the embedded, but over here, Microsoft is going to work on the F SKUs. A tenant can have one or more capacities associated with it. Capacities define the ability of a resource to perform any activity to produce certain output. Different item consumes a different capacity that totally depends on how you are designing or what kind of items you are provisioning on those capacities. You may experience that one data set is consuming a lot of capacity, another one is not. Maybe because of the performance tuning that you have done over there. Now we are going to talk about the domain. In Fabric, a domain is a logical grouping of workspaces. Domains can also have subdomains. For example, let's suppose you are working in an organization where you have the different departments, finance, HR, and maybe some other departments over there. And you have to create workspaces for all of them. Now, one domain, for example, HR department can have multiple workspaces. So if you would like to combine all of them, then you can use this domain. Domain is now, I believe, generally available because I cannot see any preview one over there, which we are going to see in a while as well when I'm going to show you the Fabric Admin Portal as well. Now, domain can also have subdomain. I have already created a dedicated video on domains. If you would like to check that out, I'll provide you a link in the description section. Now, we are going to talk about the workspaces. Workspaces are nothing but a space in your tenant or on the cloud services, Power BI services or Fabric uh, items or on Microsoft Fabric, where you can create items and you can store all of them at one place. You can create any number of workspaces. So as I mentioned that if you know already about Microsoft Power BI, then you are going to find these concepts very much similar over there. So it's the same workspace where you can store anything. Anything means your report, dashboard, lake house, or maybe whenever you are provisioning data engineering, you need to create a lake house or any data storage solution over there, then you can use these workspaces. Now, what is a fabric item? Fabric items are nothing but the building blocks of Microsoft Fabric platform. You are going to use these fabric items in order to start utilizing the services from the Microsoft Fabric platform. And what are these items? These items can be your report, dashboard, lake house, your notebook, anything that you create over there, that you provision over there. All these are known as your Microsoft Fabric items. So these were the different concepts that you should know about Microsoft Fabric when you start working on it. However, if you still have any question and concern, you may let me know in the comment section and I'm going to help you over there. After learning all the concepts, now we are going to learn about the Microsoft Fabric admin role. So whenever it comes to the admin role, as I mentioned, that you are going to be responsible for security and governance. You are also going to be responsible for the access control. You are going to be responsible for the different configuration that may include the data gateway configuration or when you have to monitor and optimize, you are going to use that. So let's learn one by one. What are these? When it, gonna, when it comes to the security and access control, basically, whenever you have to give the access to the different employees into your organization or the users who are going to consume your fabric items, there your security and access control comes. You can create different roles like view, member, contributor, etc. And then you have to control those accesses over there. This is also going to help you to maintain the security groups as well. As a Power BI admin or Microsoft Fabric admin, you get this option that whom you would like to allow access to the certain features, which we are going to see that. For example, who can create the Fabric items in your Microsoft Fabric platform? Then you have to allow a certain security group over there. It's also a best practice that you always create one group or AD group and then use that group to allow different accesses on your Microsoft Fabric admin portal. Now, data governance. Data governance is another very important concept over here that you should learn. Effective fabric administration requires a solid understanding of data governance principles. You should know that how you can secure your inbound and outbound activities or connectivities in your tenant and how to monitor usage and performance of metrics. Of metrics. You should know how to apply data governance policies to ensure data within your tenant is only accessible to the certain authorized users only if you are gonna do more than that then definitely there can be consequences so please be very much informed next is customization and configurations so fabric admin also involves customization and configuration to platform to meet your organization goal this would include configuration of your private link private link to secure your tenant defining data classification policies adjusting the look and feel of your uh, reports and dashboards etc 
And lastly, we are going to talk about the monitoring and optimization. As a fabric admin, you are going to be responsible of monitoring and optimization of the of fabric items, and that also includes your data sets, reports, etc. But you have to also pay attention to the how many workspaces are there, do you need a lot of workspaces or not. You may need to monitor the different capacities that what is their usage is going, is there any rejection or not, queries are getting failed, users are going to face slowness over there, etc. So please be very much mindful when you are going to work on as a fabric admin, you have to take care of all these activities. Now we are going to move further and we are going to talk about the fabric admin tools. What are the different tools that are available there that are going to help you to administer Microsoft fabric? The very first tool we are going to talk about the portal, which is Fabric Admin Portal. It is very much the same as the Power BI Admin Portal. So let me take you over there. Now you can see that currently I have logged in onto my Microsoft Power BI website, but ideally it's the same as the Fabric. You can see that I have a trial period of Microsoft Fabric, which is 48 days are remaining over there. And at the bottom corner, at the bottom left hand side corner, I can switch into different experiences of Microsoft Fabric. That's what you can do over there. Now, if you would like to access the admin portal of Microsoft Fabric, you have to come here, click on this gear icon, and over there, you're gonna get this admin portal. Now, you, as I mentioned, the domains are available now in general. That means they are publicly available. They are no more, they are no longer in the preview. So you can start using it. You can see over here, I have created certain domains, so you can also create it, and that's gonna help you to logically organize your workspaces. Now, come to the tenant setting. This is going to be the most important part for you as a Fabric Admin from where you can use the security groups and you can control all the different accesses or exporting, importing, etc. If you are not aware about the Power BI Admin, then we have created another tutorial for you. I'm going to provide a link in the description section, so please don't forget to check that out. Now, if you just need to activate Fabric, then first you have to click over here and you have to enable over here that users can create Fabric items, but this is not going to be enough for you. You have to also activate one more part, which is gonna come over here. Users can try Microsoft Fabric paid features. If you are gonna enable these two options, only then the users can try Microsoft Fabric, which is a 60 days free trial period. So please use it. And then you can also use the security groups over here, as I mentioned. So this is the portal that you are gonna use to perform different admin activities. Now let's go back. Now we are back over here. So the second part is going to be using the PowerShell. So PowerShell commandlets are going to let you extract the different audit data. So you can use that to extract the different audit data. You can create your own audit report, etc. But not only that, you can also use the different commands over there to perform certain activities. Maybe you need to assign some user some role. Maybe you need to configure gateways or workspaces, etc. that you can do that over here. One of the activities like you have to change from large to uh, small data set format or from small to large data set format that also you can do. So you can use them. The second part is APIs and SDKs. These are going to help you to perform different operations on your tenant. For example, you want to refresh any of the items over there, then you can use the different APIs. So this is, these are the two that are very much helpful, but there's one more which is admin monitoring workspace. This is going to help you out that uh, about the users that how many users are using the items, what is the percentage of using, how they are using, what is the uh, different activities being performed into your portal, etc. So if I'm going to go back over there again. So right now I'm over here. So if I'll come here and discard all. So here you would see this is the monitoring hub, but you have to come again under this portal, admin portal. And here, if I'm gonna come premium user notice usage metrics. So from here, you can access that app where you can check out. You can also upgrade it. There's another version of this, which somehow I'm not able to see. I need to check that out guys. But what I mean to say that, that you can use this uh, metrics app over here to track the activities being performed into your fabric portal. Now, Manage fabric security. This is another most important part that you should know how to manage security in Microsoft Fabric. First, you know you should know as a fabric administrator that how to assign and manage licenses. What are the different licenses? What are the different FSQs? And how you can uh, provision them using your Microsoft Azure. Yes, you heard me right. If you have to take different capacities or Microsoft Fabric capacities, then you have to use Microsoft Azure. From there, you can provision it. Then manage items and sharing as well. It's another part. That means uh, with whom you are sharing your data sets or lake house or whom you are allowing access, who can update it, who can delete the items, etc. Everything you are going to manage with this one. 
Next is govern the data in Fabric, which we already talked about. Governance is the most important part that you should know. And one of the other part is the certification or endorsement of Fabric items. I have already talked about what is the endorsement, what is the uh, and how to do that in Fabric in Power BI. But in Fabric is the same part. You have to first promote your data set or your report or any other item. And after that, you have to make it certified. How, why we are doing that? I think you also have the same question. Well, guys, we are only doing it to make sure that we that our data has been validated or our report design templates have been validated. And now they can also be used as a shared data set or anybody in the organization can use them. It's just a certification that this data is the right one and you can start using it immediately. Next is scan for sensitive data. You should know that metadata scanning facilitates governance of data by enabling cataloging and reporting on all the metadata of your organization's fabric items. The scanner API, you can use it to perform scanning of your metadata and then you can get to know, for example, how many data sets are there, how many reports are there, who are the owner of those reports and data sets, etc. So the scanner API is a set of admin REST APIs that allow you to scan fabric item for sensitive data. Use the scanner API to scan data warehouses, data pipelines, cementing models, reports and dashboard for sensitive data. This scanner API can be used to scan both your structured and unstructured data. Now, last is the uh, track data lineage. So you can also track data lineage, which is the ability to track the flow of data through fabric. Data lineage allows the data lineage, data lineage allows you to see where data comes from, how it is transformed and where it goes. This, help you, this helps you to understand the data that is available in Fabric and how it is being used. So please use these features to govern your data inside Microsoft Fabric. Next is the data lineage. Data lineage is the ability to track the flow of data through Fabric. Data lineage allows you to see where data comes from, how it is being transformed and where it goes. This helps you to understand the data is available in Fabric and how it is being used. So this is all about the administrator in Microsoft Fabric. If you have any question and concern, please do let us know. But before that, I would also strongly recommend you to please check our tutorial on Microsoft Power BI Admin. This is gonna help you to understand that how to use your Microsoft Fabric Admin and then furthermore, how to do the administrator in Microsoft Fabric. If you like this video, please don't forget to like this video, share with your friends. And also, if you are over here for the very first time, please do subscribe this channel and stay tuned for my next video. Not only that, if you are looking for any Microsoft Fabric, Microsoft Power BI training program, please do contact with us. And I'm going to see you in the next video.